Sanjay, let's talk about uh, Secretary Clinton's health. Have you seen the health records or the note that her doctor has released? Yeah, yeah. And what did that outline? Why is that not satisfying to many people? Well, you know, it, it's a summary, essentially. It's a two-page letter that's sort of a summary of her health. Uh, it talks about uh, the fact that she had a, a deep venous thrombosis, for example, back in 1998. And then again in 2009, it talks a lot about that's a clotting thing. disorder. That's a blood clot in the legs that can sometimes DVT. break off. DVT. Sometimes DVT. people they'll talk about it in terms of you can't fly with it and stuff like that. Yeah, and it can break off potentially go to the lungs. That's a pulmonary embolism. That was a concern. They talk about the fact that she's had uh, she was on a blood thinner at least since 2009 because of that DVT. But I think it was this this thing in 2012 that, that was sort of the biggest concern, uh, where she fell, she hit her head. She had a concussion, a type of brain injury, and also developed a blood clot around the brain at that time as well. But is there anything that jumps out at you as uh, particularly abnormal for her age? No, I mean, you know, I think the thing in 2012 is, is a, it's not a common thing, certainly, to hit your head and then develop this sort of blood clot around the brain. But there was nothing about it that didn't make sense. It certainly was possible for that to happen. She was on a blood thinner already, even before she hit her head, supposedly. So that was the one thing that was always a, a little bit curious, because when you're on a blood thinner, you're at more risk of bleeding uh, as a result of that, as opposed to clotting. She actually developed a blood, cl a blood clot after that injury in 2012. But other than that, it, it, it fits. It makes sense. But So here's the larger question that, that this raises, and, and it raised in a, in a comedic sense with the Trump doctor who put out that letter about him. These people, one of them, is going to be the next leader of yeah. the free world. Do you think we need to know more uh, in general? You know, just like we're going after Trump for his taxes. We want to know what you are financially. Do you think the time has come in America to know more about the physical well-being of the person who may lead you. I, I, think, I think absolutely. And I think that time is, was probably come a, a while ago. I mean, it's, it's remarkable how little we do know about our presidential candidates. As I think you're pointing out, it's come into much clearer focus, I think, in this particular election, because in part because of the age and in part because of now this health issue. But yeah, whether it's an independent group of doctors, separate from their own doctors, because there is this collegial relationship between the doctors and the candidates. They're kind of friends. And so you get these summaries, and, and as you point out, that sometimes are full of this colloquial language, not the objective data that, that you just would want. So maybe it's independent doctors. Back in 2008, uh, Senator McCain uh, invited a group of reporters to come evaluate his medical records for several hours. I was one of those reporters. That's how he decided to handle it. But we know very little about these two candidates. And I think, I think the time has come. The time may have already come even some time ago. So Alex, campaign strategy. What are you hearing about why the campaign did not disclose that she had pneumonia until after the stumble into the van, until after she seemed faint? Uh, all that stuff that raised a lot of questions when, had they said it 24 hours earlier, that would have been answered. Yeah, I think there are a lot of questions about exactly why the Clinton campaign decided to uh, disclose the information at the rather slow pace, not just over the weekend, but even hour to hour yesterday. She was diagnosed with pneumonia on Friday. Why not just say it immediately uh, after she left the World Trade Center site? I do think it's important to remember here, uh, and Sanjay kind of alluded to this, you know, these are people, uh, the candidates, with you know, their private health issues and their uh, very personal inclinations about how much they want to share. And there's only so much that their staff can do mm -hmm. uh, to counteract that. If your candidate yeah. doesn't want to share something about their physical well-being or if they're uncomfortable answering that kind of question, uh, your campaign strategy isn't necessarily in a position Maybe to Maybe it shouldn't be their call, though. That. You know, you want to get a contract to play professional sports with a team. You know what they do? They put you through a battery of physical <laughs> exams to make sure you're worth the investment by them. And that's for, like, a football player. Well, in a way, in a way, leader in a way of the, we, of the world. In a way, we do, though, right? The, the, these it's people have to maintain a pretty aggressive right. campaign schedule. Oh my and I gosh, do think yes. So, but, yeah. No, but we have to know, we don't know what's going on with them physically. I mean, even once they're in office, you don't know. I mean, you know, you hearken back to Dick Cheney, you know, and, and you know, and God bless him and, and his continued health. But, you know, the heart attacks, when you learned what you did and what was going on, you'd have to have someone like Sanjay, you know, going deep investigative to figure out little clues. That's the, the larger issue. So we then get to the, the, the good point that Allison's raising, which is, this is about her health. It's also about the nature of the Clinton campaign's disclosure. Right. Oh, it was too hot. Oh, it's the hypothyroidism. Oh, she stumbled off the curb. Oh, and by the way, she had pneumonia. That's the criticism, is that you only hear what they want to tell you when they have to tell you. Well, right, and th that's why this is an unforced error. If they had just come out and said she had pneumonia and then she, she 
<laughs> toughs it out and goes to a 9-11 memorial and she faints, that's really understandable. Judging by my Twitter feed, a lot of people have had pneumonia because mm -hmm. there were a lot of that one time I had pneumonia stories yesterday. So it, it, it's just that, that balance that they haven't really achieved as to what the public needs to know, that this person is sick. Pneumonia is, a, I mean, if Dr. Nguyen knows better than I do, it is serious. Um, and, you know, what, what they can keep hidden until they absolutely have to until she you know, faints into a van.